Hey friends, it's Ray from The Homebody Company and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make flying geese one at a time. Um, I also have written up a blog post in case you need that step-by-step -step tutorial, but I thought a video for this would be helpful because I will be working with directional fabrics, which is my main reason for using this method. In my new path pattern, it already has a ton of movement in it, so my different rows and columns, I wanting to focus and make sure that each of those flying geese are all moving in the same way. With four at a time flying geese, it is possible to control the direction of fabrics to an extent. You wouldn't end up with all four of your flying geese the same way, and with this method, you're able to do so. So for this method of making flying geese, you're going to need one rectangle and two squares. That will be the smaller triangles or your sky. In my blog post, you'll find a chart where I list out all the different sizes that you should cut your rectangles and squares depending on the in size of flying geese that you are looking for. You'll also need a water soluble pen and a ruler of any size. This is just to mark the diagonal lines. So we're going to make this so that the sky is facing the correct direction. And to start off, we're going to place this square right sides together with our rectangle. And it's always going to be sideways. It just takes a little figuring it out to see which direction it'll go. I like to test a few blocks. As you can see, it's upside down when faced this direction. So we're going to flip it around and turn up that corner again as if we are pressing. And you'll see that the trees are facing right side up. So this is where we will draw our diagonal line for sewing. I'll take my ruler and my water soluble pin and just mark a quick line here so that I know where I need to sew and how to line it up. We'll place that back on our rectangle. Check it again just to be sure and then pin it in place so that I can sew. So as you can see, I have sewn along the drawn line and now we are going to trim a quarter inch away from the outside edge here. So we're going to line up the quarter inch on our ruler with the drawn line and cut that off. But make sure to keep that for the end and I'll show you what to do with it. So now we're going to press. I like to press the top first just to kind of seal it. And then we'll flip it open and press to the small triangle or the sky. Making sure you're not really sliding your iron around or anything. Give it a little starch and press it over. And then we'll flip it around and give it a press on the top. So now that we have our first side complete with the tree facing the correct direction, we're going to do our other side. And remember, we have our square laying down on here, right sides together. Flip it up and see that the pumpkins are facing the correct direction. So this is where we're going to draw our diagonal line like we did the last time using our ruler and water soluble pen. We'll mark that, pin it down on our rectangle. It'll overlap your other one just a bit and that's exactly what you want. Check it one more time. So we're going to sew along this drawn line as well. We'll pin this in place. So we've sewn along our second drawn line and we're going to trim the edge the same way we did, lining up the quarter inch mark with our drawn and sewn line. Making sure to keep those triangles so I can show y'all what to do with them. We'll press again and then open it up, pressing to the small triangle once again with a little bit of starch making sure you're not moving your iron around too much so you don't stretch out your fabric. Now 
Now with every flying geese, I prefer to make them a little bit larger and trim so that I can make sure they are accurate. They are almost always just a tad bit wonky when I make them um, as no waste. So we're going to line up our block lock flying geese ruler here and we're going to trim around each edge. I start with these two edges. And then I flip both the ruler and the flying geese so that I can trim um, on the side that I'm comfortable with. Lining them up with the edges I've already trimmed and trim off the final two edges. And there you go. A perfect accurate flying geese with all of your fabrics in the same direction. So now with these two, even though they're a little bit small, I like to make half square triangles using these for a fun addition to the pattern, especially when I have multiple flying geese being made in this way. So we're going to sew a quarter inch along the edge of each of these. Okay, now we have both of these sewn, so we're going to press them open. I like to press on top. And then we will open them up. And I'm going to press the dark side with these. Add a little starch. And press that over. Being careful not to um, really pull at the fabric and create a slanted line here. Once again, press to the dark side. With smaller things like this, I finger press just a tiny bit to make it easier for my iron. And then you'll just trim them up to whatever size really fits. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, there's any particular size that you can for sure get out of a pattern. Depending on your accuracy though, they should all end up about the same size. So I'm going to make these all one and a half inches from these flying geese. And then you have two half square triangles from each of your flying geese units. I like to make little pillows when they're this small. Sometimes you can make a whole nother quilt depending on the size that you have. But these are just a fun little addition to have with your finished quilt top. I hope this tutorial was helpful and showed you an easy way to line up your directional fabric so that all of your flying geese match and have it going in the same direction. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave it in the section below. And for the blog post as well as some tools I use during this video, you can check out the description. Thanks for watching! Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.